Welcome to another lecture on engineering mechanics. Today we will learn about equilibrium. So let us start the lecture. Let us first see definition of equilibrium of a particle. When the net effect that is resultant of all the forces of all the forces acting on the particle is zero, then particle is said to be in equilibrium. Let us understand this through an example. Suppose on this body three forces are acting and if the resultant of all these three forces is zero, that is these three forces are not producing any effect on the body means the state of motion of the body remains unchanged. Then we can say this particular body is in equilibrium. So equilibrium means state of rest. That means there is no translation and rotation motion. In order to understand equilibrium in detail, let us first talk about possible displacements of a body on the application of a force. If there is a coplanar force system acting on a body having a resultant force R and a resultant couple m, then there are three possible displacements for the body. These are, the first one is, there can be a linear displacement of the body in x direction due to the component effects of all the forces. There can be a linear displacement of the body in y direction due to the component Fy of all the forces and there can be a rotation due to resultant couple m of all the forces. So these are the three possible displacements of a body when it is under the action of a force system. Now let us relate that with the equilibrium of a particle. So in the first slide we said that if the net effect of all the forces that is force system acting on the body is zero, then the state of motion of the body will remain unchanged. Now let us relate that to the possible displacements of the body under the action of the forces. Then we will find that in equilibrium of a particle, the sum of all the forces acting on the body in x direction is zero. Therefore, the component fx of all the forces acting in the force system must be equal to zero. Similarly, the sum of all the forces acting on the body in y direction is zero. That means Fy should be equal to zero. And there should not be any rotation of the body as well. That means the moment because of all the forces acting on the body is zero. So we have concluded that if a body is in equilibrium under the action of a force system, then all these three equations are applicable on that body. So we call these three equations as equations of equilibrium. That means if number of forces are acting on a body and body is in equilibrium, that means if we will add the components of those forces acting in x direction, their sum has to be zero because body is not moving in x direction. Similarly, the sum of the components of all the forces acting along y direction must be equal to zero because body is also not moving in y direction. Similarly, the moment or the couple because of those forces must be equal to zero because body is not rotating. So we will make use of these three equations in the numericals related to equilibrium of a particle. Now we'll talk about body constraints. A body constraint is a contrived support or force provided such that the body remains in equilibrium. 
constraints provide reactive forces and or couples depending upon the type of constraints provided so let us understand this through an example what are body constraints if you have to give example of body constraints then photograph hanging on a nail is the best example so let us see how suppose a photograph is hanging on a nail and let us see what is happening over here the weight of the photograph is acting in downward direction but still it is in equilibrium why because there is one constraint provided by the nail that is the reaction which acts in opposite direction and this reaction is equal to weight of the photograph so the constraint provided by this nail helps this particular body to remain in equilibrium so over here we will say that nail is acting as a body constraint which provides a constraint to the motion of the photograph in vertical direction so we can say the reaction provided by the nail is equal to weight of the photograph now we will see the constraints provided by different surfaces let us first talk about smooth surface suppose we have a smooth surface and on that surface body is placed now we know for every body there can be three types of motions either body can move along x direction or body can move in y direction or body can rotate so if you will talk about smooth surface it will provide only one body constraint means smooth surface will not allow the motion of the body in y direction the weight of the body is balanced by the reaction provided by the smooth surface but the body can move along the surface that is in x direction and body can rotate as well so what we have learned smooth surface can provide only one body constraint which acts at 90 degrees to the surface or we can say normal to the surface next we will talk about rough surface suppose we have a rough surface and on that surface body is placed now again we know that there can be three possible displacements of the body body can move in x direction or along the surface body can move in y direction that is normal to the surface or body can rotate but rough surface provides two types of body constraints first body constraint will be normal to the surface this body constraint will restrict the motion of the body in y direction or we can say normal to the surface rough surface will also provide one more body constraint and this will be along the surface and this will not allow the movement of the body along the surface but body can rotate so we have learned rough surface provides two types of body constraints one normal to the surface one normal to the surface let us learn about the next body constraint that is roller support roller support is used to support the bodies normally we use such supports in bridges that we will see when we will take some problems on trusses now let us see what type of body constraints a roller support can provide you can see in this picture this is a roller support it has rollers at the bottom and at the top it supports the body now body is supported by this roller support and to body roller support provides only one constraint that is normal to its surface means it restricts the motion of the body normal to the surface but body can move along the surface 
our body can rotate as well. So roller supports provide only one type of body constraint that is normal to the surface. Next we will talk about rocker support. So these supports are also used to support the bodies. So in rocker support we have a curved surface at the bottom and like roller supports these supports also give only one type of body constraint that is they don't allow the motion of the body normal to the surface but body can move along the surface or body can rotate as well. So remember rocker supports provide only one type of body constraint that is normal to surface. Next we will talk about hinge support. It is also known as pin support. This is a hinge support. It also supports bodies. Hinge support restricts two types of motions of the body. Body cannot move along the surface. Body cannot move normal to the surface, but body can rotate. Therefore, hinged support provides two body constraints, one normal to the surface, one along the surface. Now, based on the learning of equilibrium of a particle or body and the body constraints provided by different supports. Let us solve few numericals. Let us start with the first numerical. A fixed crane has a mass of 1000 kg and is used to lift a 2400 kg crate. It is held in place by a pin at A and a rocker at B. The center of gravity of the crane is located at G. Determine the components of the reactions at A and B. So one diagram is given to us. Let us understand the problem through this diagram. So there is one fixed crane and the mass of that fixed crane is 1000 kg and it is used to lift a crate whose mass is 2400 kg and we have two supports one is pin support or we can say hinged support at end A and a rocker support at end B and the center of gravity of the crane is labeled at G. Now we are asked to find the components of the reactions at A and B. So in order to solve this problem, first of all, we have to draw the free body. So in order to draw the free body, what we will do? We will draw whatever is given in this diagram first on the notebook. Then after that, we will label active forces, reactive forces and weight of the body. We will show their direction and magnitudes. So let us start with the reactive forces first. Now we know we have two types of supports over here. One is pin support or hinge support. The other one is labeled as rocker support. In the previous slides, we have learned that pin support provides two types of body constraints. It don't allow the motion of the body along the surface and normal to the surface. This is the surface of pin support. It means we can show one body constraint normal to the surface and we can show other body constraint along the surface. So let me show those two body constraints now. So this is normal to the surface and this is along the surface. Now over here we have to understand one very important point. Initially, we don't know the direction of these two reactions. So we have to assume their direction. I have assumed that this particular direction 
is acting towards right for the normal constraint and this direction is acting in downward direction for the constraint along the normal when we will solve for these two constraints and if we get positive answer for this constraint that is rx and the other constraint that is ry then positive answer means that whatever assumptions we have made regarding the directions of these two reactions then that assumption is correct but suppose i got negative answer for this normal constraint then that negative answer means that assumption which i took at the start for this particular constraint is wrong it will actually act towards left so this you should keep in your mind when we label the reactions provided by a particular support at the start we don't know their directions so we just assume their directions at the start of the numerical we solve those reactions we get their numerical value if the magnitude of those reactions remains positive in the calculations then we come to know that the directions which we have assumed at the start of the numerical are correct otherwise we have to reverse those directions at the end of the answer okay so over here i have labeled this particular normal constraint as reaction at a in x direction i have labeled this constraint as reaction at a in y direction next is rocker support in the previous slides we learned that rocker support provides only one type of constraint it don't allow the body to move normal to the surface so let us show that constraint so we have labeled one constraint normal to the surface means at 90 degrees to the surface of rocker support and the point mentioned for rocker support is b so we have labeled it as reaction at b but the direction is x direction so reaction at b in x direction so for this reaction also we don't know its direction at the start so we have just assumed that it is acting towards right after that we will label the weight of the isolated body so isolated body over here is crane so weight in the problem is given as 1000 kg so let us label it in downward direction then we will label other external forces so other external force is the weight of the crate it will also act in downward direction now remember over here we have labeled 1000 kg so this is not weight this is mass so in the calculations we have to multiply it by 9.81 to get the weight of the isolated body that is crane similarly 2400 kg is mass of the crate but in the calculations when we will consider the weight of the crate we have to multiply 2400 by 9.81 now let us start the calculations now we have to apply three equations of equilibrium over here in this particular problem we have five forces fine and we can say that in this force system there are five forces acting and we know that for this particular position shown the body or the system is in equilibrium so that means the components of all the forces acting along x direction their sum must be zero that is summation fx is equal to zero similarly the components of all the forces acting along y direction that sum must be equal to zero that is summation fy equal to zero then the moment because of all the forces about any particular point in the 
free body must be zero because body is not rotating body is in equilibrium so we will use all those three equations to solve for the unknowns so what are the unknowns for us we have ray rax rbx and these three we have to find so first of all let us apply summation fx is equal to 0 that means as the body is in equilibrium it means all the forces acting along x direction their net effect must be 0 so find all the forces acting in x direction add those forces and equate those forces equal to 0 so let us see how many forces are acting in x direction over here you can see there are two forces acting in x direction then we will focus on their direction both are acting towards right so both we have to consider as positive forces so for this equation we will write rax plus rbx is equal to zero look over here now in this equation both are unknown to us so this is a single equation we cannot solve it so let us label this as equation one now we will apply second equation of equilibrium that is summation fy is equal to zero that means if the body is in equilibrium then all the forces acting along y direction their sum has to be zero so let us see how many forces are acting along y direction add those forces and equate those forces equal to zero so you can see there are three forces acting in y direction one is reaction ray second is weight of the crane third is weight of the crate and you can see all these three forces are acting in downward direction so we have to consider these three negative so let us write the equation so equation will be minus ray minus 1000 into 9.81 we have converted this into weight minus 2400 into 9.81 we have converted this also into weight is equal to zero now in this equation only one unknown is there it means we can solve this equation so let us solve this equation so when you will solve this equation you will find the value of ray so we have found the first answer that is the value of the reaction at a in y direction now look over here we got positive value it means the assumption which we took at the start of the numerical is correct it is actually acting in downward direction now let us apply the third equation now let us first see what is the meaning of third equation but we know that there can be three possible displacement of a body first is it can move along x direction it can move along y direction or it can rotate so we have used first two equations to show that it is not moving in x direction it is not moving in y direction now we will use third equation that is equation of movements to show that body is not rotating so how body will rotate if some of the forces are giving movements to the body only then body will rotate so if the body is not rotating that means the movements provided by the forces in the force system about any particular point must be equal to zero so in this case we will consider a point first at that point we will find movements because of all the forces and we will add those movements and we will equate those equal to zero because we want to say that movement because of all the forces at any particular point is zero because body is not rotating now next question comes that which point we should take to take the movements now answer to that question is try to consider that point as a movement center to take the movements at which maximum forces are acting so if you will do this your equation will become simple let us see how now suppose if i take movements because of all the five forces about point a then what will happen 
moment because of ray and rax will directly become zero why because their perpendicular distance is zero from the moment center so our equation will have only three moments moments because of rbx moment because of weight of the crane and moment because of weight of the crate so our equation will become simple but if we consider moment let us say at point g then only moment because of the weight of the crane will be zero but we have to calculate moment for all the other four forces so again i am repeating consider that point on the free body to take the moment at which maximum forces are acting so that is why i have written over here moment about point a is equal to zero so you see these two forces are directly acting at point a so moment because of these two will be zero so we have to just calculate moment because of these three forces only so let us understand moment because of rbx first at point a now in order to find the moment of rbx at point a we have to first find its moment arm so how you can find moment arm first of all you will locate its line of action then from moment center you will drop a perpendicular onto that line of action so this is the moment arm for rbx and this moment arm is mentioned here as 1.5 meters so for rbx moment arm is 1.5 meters next we will see what is the nature of the moment generated by this force now you can see the shortest path between the vector and the moment center is this only it means in this process what will happen it will generate anti clockwise moment so anti clockwise moments are positive it means moment because of rbx will be rbx multiplied by 1.5 Now let us consider moment because of the weight of the crane. So first of all, we have to find its moment arm. How to find the moment arm now? Draw the line of action of the force, and from moment center, draw a perpendicular onto that force. So this moment arm is represented here as two meters. Next, we will see its nature of moment. now you can see the shortest path is this only so vector will try to move towards the moment center so in that process it will generate clockwise moment fine clockwise moments are negative it means moment because of this weight will be minus 1000 into 9.81 into moment arm 2 meters next let us see moment because of the weight of the crate now let us first find the moment arm so this is the line of action of that force and from moment center drop a perpendicular onto that line of action so this moment arm is represented here it is equal to 4 plus 2 that is 6 meters is the moment arm for this weight and let us see its nature again it will generate a clockwise moment so clockwise moments are negative so moment because of this crate will be minus 2400 into 9.81 into 6 meters so let us see this in calculations over here you can see moment because of rbx we calculated anti clockwise and that is positive into moment of 1.5 then minus 1000 into 9.81 into 2 then minus 2400 into 9.81 into 6 so this must be equal to 0 so in this equation only one unknown is there and we can find its value so from this equation its value is 107.25 kN and you can see over here it is also positive it means whatever direction we considered for rbx at the start of the numerical that direction is also correct now we are left with only one unknown what is that unknown rx so we'll say put the value of rbx in equation 1 to get the value of rx 
Now you can see when you will do this, you will get its value as Rx equal to minus 107.25 kilonewtons. So minus sign over here tells us that direction which we considered at the start of the numerical for this Rax is not correct. It will, it will actually act towards left. So no need to reverse it. You will just write it, its answer negative. So from that it is clear that it is actually acting towards left side. So I hope this particular numerical is clear to you. Thank you very much.